So I don't think we've done the joke of opening up a bottle with something silly in a while. So do you have anything for me to open this with? Yeah, here you go. Sweet. <gasps> Space Jam on VHS. Oh yeah. Oh, clearly. <laughs> we've got to do it with the actual VHS tape, haven't I? I hope I don't break this, because I actually kind of want to watch it. Come on, come on, Bugs Bunny. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Space Jam stays winning. During the 25 or so years it's been on the air, The Simpsons has addressed nearly every social issue to exist, including, most pertinent to today's video, homosexuality. While the episode that addressed this topic, simply titled Homer's Phobia, has been lauded by critics for how it handles such a sensitive issue, early in development, the script for that episode included one of the worst slurs it's possible to call a gay person, which remained in it right up until an actual gay man told them to maybe cut that shit out. Okay, so let's establish who this gay man was. Well, that gay man was one John Waters, a man famous for his films in addition to the fact he owns a moustache straighter than a giraffe's neck brace. And that's not me joking. Okay, so you can see a picture of John Waters, presumably, audience at home behind me now. Um, his iconic pencil moustache was so difficult for the animators to realise without it looking like a mistake, in the episode of The Simpsons he appeared in, they had to redesign it somewhat so it looked like this. And according to John Waters, he found that shit hilarious. And an additional bonus fact about Waters' appearance on the episode is that he accepted the invitation to appear on the show without even reading the script. And according to him, he accepted the invitation instantly because a famous actress, and I forget which one, presumably there'll be a quote about it below me, um, I appeared on the show before him, and he said, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. I'll do whatever the fuck you want. It's The Simpsons, I don't care. I say, yeah, Simpsons, most people have probably been on that anyway. Yeah. Like, you get all sorts of, like, stars appearing in it now. But at the time, like, John Waters went, yeah, if, she, if it's good enough for her, I don't need to ask what the script's about. I will accept it unreservedly. And that's really cool. It's probably a good job that they did, as we're about to discuss. So, let's discuss what the episode was. Well, the episode, like, in a roundabout way, is about Homer worrying that Bart might turn gay. And it includes, I'd argue, some of the funniest scenes in The Simpsons ever, including the part where Bart and Homer go to a steel mill, because Homer wants to, like, you know, literally set Bart straight by showing some, like, here are some manly, rugged men for you to, like, <laughs> learn from. And the steel mill just turns into a gay nightclub. It is, like, they're just topless men. Yeah. They're just sore in a way. Yeah, no, it, what happens is, like, oh, at the end of the shift, he goes, and I was like, what's happening? He goes, we work hard, we play hard. Oh, it's like, yeah, everybody yeah. dance now. It's like, thumping techno comes That's on. It. Oh my God, what's happening now? We work hard, we play hard. Everybody dance now! <laughs> and he kind of thinks he's got the anvil. And it's just loads of shirtless buff men just dancing. <laughs> and I remember the line always sticks to me when Bart goes, Dad, why did you bring me to a gay steel mill? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Dad, why did you bring me to a gay steel mill? I don't know. So the episode is full of hilarious jokes anyway. Yes, well it's early Simpsons, of course it's got good jokes in it. So what did John Waters' character do? Well his character is obviously gay and owns an antique shop which the Simpsons go to. Um, suffice to say, shenanigans occur, and the Simpsons befriend this character, also called John, which must have been really easy for line readings. And throughout the episode, Homer slowly learns to come to terms with the fact that John is gay. Because when Homer first learns that John is gay, he calls him a sneak, despite the fact he never once portrayed himself as anything other than himself, yeah. and then accuses him of spreading gayness. <laughs> Like, like, he treats it like it's some sort of contagious disease that his son's going to catch. Right. Hence the name of the episode, Homer's Phobia. And Waters was perfectly fine with all of that because he got what the writers were trying to do, which is, like, you know, put the most prominent poisonous talking points of bigoted people and have them come out of the mouth of the world's most famous idiot. And by the end of the episode, Homer comes to terms with the fact that John is gay and accepts him for who he is in his own, like, you know, particular Homer way. But what is this about there being, like, an offensive word in the script originally? Well, yeah. well in the original script, um, Homer outright calls John's character a fag. <sighs> yeah. Think about that for a moment. Think about that for a moment. And um, Waters was asked to read over the script because one, he is gay, and two, very prominent in the gay world and community. And like in that sense, could probably speak with some authority on what people might find offensive about the script or what they might take issue with. And he looked through the script and said, everything's fine. All looks good to me. I have no issue with it. However, you, you might want to um, cut out this line where um, Homer, you know, the character that everyone's supposed to empathise with and be an everyman calls me a fag. 
you might want to cut that. And the writers were genuinely confused about why until John explained it's because it's offensive. And if it wasn't for Waters looking over the scripts and pointing that out, that line may have very well made it into the episode. And since we've already pissed off the comments as it is, let's just now talk about TV shows that you watch back with that more critical understanding eye and just go, oh, maybe you shouldn't put that in, that's not aged well. Oh, a good example is Little Britain. Oh my God. <laughs> Little Britain, I, I need to tell this story because I, I know someone who is Asian and they'd never seen Little Britain. So I said, have you not seen Little Britain? Like, no. Nah. Oh, you need to see some Little Britain. And I put on an episode with Ting Tong. And people are like, the fuck is Ting Tong, Carl? Here's Ting Tong. Also, I should point out that's a white guy playing that character. <laughs> and I put this on, and here's the character called Ting Tong. And they watched it, and their mouth was just agape. And like, when did this show air? about 10 years ago. How, what? And I went, yeah, also these guys are all famous now. These guys, both of these guys are millionaires and they both write children's books. I'm like, what? Also, um, I think Matt Lucas is the, is the new co-host on British Bake Off. <laughs> of course he is. They just looked at me and went, how, how did this get on TV? I'm like, and Matt Lucas himself has gone on record as saying, we wouldn't make the show today or we wouldn't make it in the form it exists now because you just can't do that. Like, we understand how, like, harmful some of the things we did can be. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, but what really cracks me up is because after I show my friend, who is Asian, that episode, I put on an episode of Come Fly With Me. Oh, God. Where they, you, you know the episode I'm talking about already, don't you? Yeah. Please put the clip in. Martin Kloon, Martin Kloon, ying ding ding ling, Martin Kloon. And I'm not laughing at the show itself. I'm laughing at just the absurdity of it. Just how bad it is. And what I told my friend, I'm going to tell you now, Nisha, because you know this, you've got it in your head, haven't you? Yeah. It is Matt Lucas and David Walliams in lit literally yellow face. They might as well just have the fucking buck teeth in. It's, it's that racist. And I said to my friend, I'm going to say the same thing to you. Now, that bit is fucking hilarious if you imagine everything that happened in the lead up to that bit being filmed. If you imagine them in the writer's room, sat there going, okay, so what could we do? It's a sketch show slash sitcom based in an airport. What characters appear in an airport? Japanese tourists, perfect. Who can play them? Well, you guys are both white. Why don't you do it? Well, perfect, let's do that. <laughs> and then you smash cut to them in the makeup chair, getting the makeup put on, and then getting the tape put on their eyes, looking in the mirror and going, That'll do. That's what's going to be on TV. And then they go and record the episode. They film it. Presumably, people off like, you know, camera are howling with laughter about how funny it is. Come off, watch the dailies back in full fucking makeup and go, that's going to wear on national TV. And I'm now going to, like, you know, delve even deeper into this because have you ever seen the Little Britain live show they did? No. Because in an old house that I had, a housemate of mine had a DVD of that that he got for like 40p <laughs> as a laugh. And they have a ting tong bit in that show. And it is so much worse than you're imagining. And I need to point out, like, the character of Ting Tong is supposed to be a Thai bride. But, like, you know, Matt Lucas is a shit actor who can't do accents. So he doesn't do a Thai accent. He just does a generically racist Asian E accent. Yeah. And it's even worse in the live show because he's laughing at his own jokes. Oh, so he keeps <laughs> slipping into his actual British English accent. Yeah, actually, I think it was probably this time last year, I saw a pantomime which had two Chinese policemen, like, characters in it. Don't tell me they were played by white guys. Yeah, they so, were. And they and did it, the accent and everything. And to bring it back to The Simpsons and the inclusion of that horrible fucking word, like, think about how many people touched that script, how many read-throughs, like, the main cast did. Yeah. Like, how many, like, you know, rewrites it went under and that word stayed in. And at no point, at no point did anyone ever think, let's ask a gay dude if this is okay. <laughs> and that reminds me of something that always seems to happen with fashion. Because there is a story, I'd say like every six months, about just some fashion brand releasing like a piece of clothing that's vaguely racist and no one notices until it's like, you know, like on the internet. Yeah. Like there's one of like a little kid, I think wearing a hoodie. Mm. And he says like the coolest monkey on the playground. And the actor yes, they put that on was black. That. Yeah. And it's like, you can't do that. And then again, just imagine the photography session where like this little kid's there, and presumably his mother's there. And they put him in the, like, the outfit and go, does he look okay? So, no. I don't know. That's just reminded me of something I saw at, um, I think it was Alton Towers. Mm -hmm. 
You know how they do the merch after each ride? Yeah. The shop with the merch in. There was one, it would be ages ago now, where it had children's t shirts that said ride me on them. <laughs> <laughs> just like why yeah. would you put that on there also how many people saw this approved it before it got on shelves it's oh, i love it it's the best thing ever yeah. but to bring it back to the simpsons and close off this video like john waters very quickly picked up on that word and pointed out to the writers that yeah maybe don't put this one in and i think Waters suggested they replace it with the word queer which he said is a perfectly like acceptable way to refer to a gay man but it's also something you can like you know add that little sneer to because I think the way Homer said it is queer. Yeah. Like you can say it like that and it becomes like, oh, okay, you're one of those. Yeah. But you can also, like, you know, say, well, you're queer. And it's like, yeah, as it's a normal thing. It's just like, yeah, that's, that's who you are. That's fine. But one of my, like, my favorite little additional factoids about this story is the only other people who objected to the inclusion of that slur was the Fox censorship board, which is not really worth discussing because they objected to pretty much the entire episode because they thought people would complain. Not because of the inclusion of that word, but because it just featured a gay guy. But Nisha, that look on your face can turn into a smile because um, not only did the episode air without any of the cuts that the Fox censorship board suggested, it won a load of awards, but that entire censorship board just got fired. <laughs> so fuck you whoever's on that board. And also, yeah, I'm looking forward to the comments on this one. Now, so Nisha, in a roundabout way, we have kind of discussed one of the topics we mentioned in this video before. Because right? we were talking about, like, you know, just actors just putting on super racist Chinese accents and even fucking, like, yellow face makeup. Yeah. Right? We talked before in a previous video about just the weird trope of just really racist cats in animated movies. Yeah, it seems to be a thing, like, um, in Lady and the Tramp. Yeah, in Cats Mr. and Dogs. Cats. Cats and dogs. Are yeah, like... it's just whenever you have a Siamese cat, we have to give the Siamese cat a racist accent. Yeah, Because yeah. how will people know it's Siamese? Well, you, you're calling it a Siamese cat, but whatever. So what do we have? We have uh, the cats from Cats and Dogs, uh, the Siamese cats from yeah. that. We have the, the cats from Aristocats, and you said Lady and the Tramp also features... Yeah, because they have the singing twin Siamese cats. Oh, right, no, we are si Oh, God, it's so bad. So what I now want to happen is, whoever edits this to do now is take those three cats and then... Pair them up as you see fit with the trifecta of racism mentioned earlier, which will be um, Ting Tong, the Japanese tourist from that episode of Come Fly With Me. Because we need a third example, we have to go for the most famous one of all, which is Mr. Yonoshi from Breakfast at Tiffany's, played by Mickey Rooney, where he literally has the book teeth and the round glasses on. So yeah, editor at home, I want you to create now the pantheon of Asian racism. <laughs> 